Okay, thanks everyone. I'm going to talk about a positive Westminster story, which I hope is helpful considering what happened yesterday. So the, the story is about a cross-party campaign that I was involved in that brought in a new law on stalking less than seven months after we launched the campaign. So I used to work in Parliament for a group of MPs in a minority party, and one of the MPs was a barrister and had a particular expertise in social justice issues. So a number of charities had approached us saying that there was a gap in the law with stalking in that the then Protection from Harassment Act was being used far more frequently to resolve neighbour disputes over hedges that growing into someone's land than actually protecting victims of stalking. So we decided to see how much of a problem this was and we contacted other MPs and members of the House of Lords from across the political spectrum that we knew cared about similar issues because one of the, the advantages of a minority party in Parliament leading something like this is that all parties are more likely to get involved. So I would recommend that if you want to lead a cross-party campaign in Parliament, it is worth trying to get maybe a minority party or one of the crossbenchers in the Lords to lead it, because then uh, people are less likely to be partisan about it. So we set up an independent parliamentary inquiry, which was quite a new thing because it wasn't involving the usual channels, so it wasn't government and opposition whips that set it up. It was us ourselves. We decided to set up the cross-party independent parliamentary inquiry into stalking law reform, which is quite a mouthful. Uh, and we set up evidence sessions. So we took evidence from police, probationers, uh, the Magistrates Association, legal experts, uh, experts in cybercrime, uh, and even victims of stalking and their families. And alongside the evidence sessions that we were taking, we mounted a full parliamentary campaign. So we used lots of different avenues to draw attention to what we were trying to do in Parliament. We got uh, we encouraged MPs and peers to table parliamentary questions uh, about the limitations of the Protection from Harassment Act. And we set down early day motions. We uh, involved lots of MPs in a backbench business debate that we secured. And I think that it was very, it was powerful that MPs and peers from across the political spectrum wanted to be involved in that. So. If you are seeking to mount a similar campaign, I think the first most important thing is to identify the support that you already have for an issue. And so that, yes, definitely MPs and peers, all parties, and also involving other stakeholders. So we were working with the uh, Protection from Stalking, we were working with the Susie Lamplew Trust, with Women's Aid, with lots of other groups who were uh, involved already and knew a lot about what was going wrong already in the system. And those are just some of the things that you can do. Also amendments to legislation, uh, just again, just different ways of gathering support for what really would have been a massive change to the law that would have saved people's lives. So we launched the report in February 2012. The evidence sessions actually took around six months. Uh, we had five evidence sessions over the six months. The most powerful of those evidence sessions was probably the, the penultimate one, when we took evidence from the victims of stalking and their families. And a lot has been said already in ECF uh, over the last two days about how powerful individual stories are. Uh, and I think that it was a watershed moment in that after having heard from experts, from uh, people about who were maybe defensive about why the current law that they may have been involved in drafting that they wanted to protect, then when they actually heard from the mouths of real people who'd been affected by the limitations in the law, uh, it was impossible to ignore. And we had uh, very, very brave women uh, Stalking, 80% of reported incidents are female victims. Of course, it can affect men as well. But the women who gave evidence to us, uh, talking about their own stories, who'd become, they'd stop being victims. They were survivors. And I think that it was incredibly powerful. And the BBC's parliamentary co correspondent, Mark Darcy, 
was in the evidence session, and he wrote a blog about it saying that it was the most harrowing evidence session he'd ever reported on, and if ever he'd heard a case being made in Parliament for a change to the law being necessary, this was it. And after that, things moved quite quickly, really, because we were already compiling the evidence that we'd received. We launched this report in February, and it had 30, maybe 31 recommendations. And on the 8th of March, International Women's Day 2012, we were all invited to attend Downing Street to hear David Cameron announce that there would be a new law on stalking uh, being introduced. And that is a picture of all of us outside 10 Downing Street. Now, I wasn't meant to be front and centre of that picture, but Baroness Brinton kind of wrote me in, in I didn't quite realise what was happening, but one of my friends did say that I should always introduce this picture, saying, and this is me with my staff. <laughs> Most of the parliamentarians, so I can't really say that. But anyway, I hope that that gives a little bit of a taster of the kind of changes that can happen to save people's lives. I hope that the new laws will already be saving people's lives. And if a group of people who are committed and want the same thing come together, a lot of change can be achieved. Thank you very much.